This lesson covers patching Windows Server. This entails it going out and finding out what updates were available. Now with Windows Server 2016 and Windows 10, Microsoft have moved to a cumulative update model. This means approximately once a month, Microsoft releases a single cumulative update. That cumulative update contains the new patches and also every previous patch released in previous months. So if I have a brand new installation of Windows Server 2016, to bring it up to date, I only have to install the latest cumulative update. I don't have to now install 300 separate updates. There are no longer 50 updates released a month. This caused problems in the past that companies would select which patches to install, meaning every company had their own unique combination of patches, which is what led to problems found in the wild, so to speak. Microsoft did not test that exact combination of these 145 patches, but not these 37. So now with the cumulative update model, everyone has the same patches deployed. The only exception to the cumulative update is in between cumulative updates, Microsoft will release security patches if required, but they will be rolled into the next cumulative update. Additionally, Windows Defender, the anti-malware definition files, are also updated almost daily and sometimes more. Here's a Microsoft website you can go to that actually shows the update history. It's showing the most recent updates, and if you select the top one, for example, it's showing this has a single fix in it, but it replaces the previously released 3213986, which is another patch down here. If I look at the previous one before that, this is a whole set of updates in it. And again, that supersedes previous versions. So these cumulative updates, these are ones I can download explicitly. Microsoft actually create additional cumulative updates, but it does not make all of these available. Once a month, it releases a major cumulative update that you should roll out to your servers once you've tested it. And there's a version for Windows 10 as well. In fact, previous versions of OS are adopting this model. For example, Windows Server 2012 R2, 2012 8.1 are also now getting these cumulative updates. So how do I get this on a typical operating system? Well, if I have no other solutions in my infrastructure, I click the Start button, I select Settings, and I will see Update and Security. And I can see here, well, there's actually some updates available to me. I can see there's a Windows Defender update. I can see there's a malicious software removal tool and there's an update, some kind of security. I can view the history of updates installed on my machine. I could go back and say, well, install now. So these are pulling these down and installing on my box. I can set active hours. So with active hours, it would not restart during these times. It would wait till out of the active hours and apply restarts then. I can set my restart options. I can set a scheduled restart for my patches. I have advanced options. So I'm saying give me updates for other Microsoft products when I update Windows. So if there was a SQL Server update, if there was a System Center update, then I would get this as well. So it's now going through, it's downloading. It's installing those from Microsoft. Now there are other options. I can use Windows Server Update Services. That is an internal server that caches copies of the updates and I would talk to that server. In fact, I also have that deployed in my environment. If I go to another server that is leveraging that and I go to my Start, Settings, Updates, you'll actually see this has Check for Updates, but I have an additional option for Check Online. Because when I check for updates, what it's actually doing is talking to my WSUS server. And I have certain patches made available. Well, maybe I want to go to the internet. Maybe for WSUS, I'm just getting patches for the operating system and Defender. Or maybe I have System Center on this box. Maybe I have some new piece of hardware and I want to check drivers from Microsoft. So I can still use that check online. Unless my administrator has explicitly blocked it. I can trigger updates from the command line open up an elevated command prompt, I can type W-U-A-U-C-L-T, the Windows Update Client, I could say detect now. It would go through and trigger that. What about if I'm server core? 
So here I'm logged on to a server core box. On server core, we have sconfig. Now I could use the same command prompt options, but here you'll actually see I have an option five. I can configure my settings. So I have it set to automatic and it's going through and making those changes. I can also say option six, download and install. Do I want all or recommended only? Well, I'll say all. So that's gonna go and check what's available, pull them down and install them. So that's another option I have because I don't have the graphical tool set on server core. What about things like nano server? What about if I don't have these options available to me? So here I'm logged into Azure and I can browse and I'm using server management tools. In fact, you can see it here. And I've actually linked it through the gateway, which is an on-premises OS instance, it does an outbound connection to Azure using port 443, so it's encrypted. It is outbound, so I don't have to open up any firewall ports. And through that, I can then connect to operating systems running Windows Management Framework 5. I'll manage as a certain account. I don't save it in Azure. I have to type it in every time, but that would certainly be an option if I wanted to. So this is now connecting via that server management tools gateway to the virtual machine. And then once I have that, I can access the registry, roles and features. I can trigger Windows Update. So this is on that box checking for updates. And then if there are updates, I can now choose to install them. So another option for patching my Windows Server. We can see I'm actually patching up to date. So there's nothing for me to do here. Another option, things like Configuration Manager, part of System Center. It will actually integrate with Windows Server Update Services to get the list of patches that are available. And then from that, I can create packages that contain the patches and then target groups of machines. I can create automatic deployment rules to automatically approve certain rules. They could be definition updates. In fact, there were templates for Patch Tuesday. There were templates for the big definitions, which probably occur daily. And it will guide me through the various configurations to auto approve them. I can set the products. And it will then target whichever collections, which are groups of machines that I want. So I have numerous solutions here from the very basic clicking settings and update through to enterprise level bulk machine using an optimized distribution set. No matter which one you use, just make sure you use something consistently. Make sure you are patching your servers. Make sure you do test them first to make sure they're not having any kind of negative effect on your workloads. Consider the bandwidth utilization when I roll out the patches. A cumulative update today is about one gigabyte in size. There are some optimizations coming to shrink that. WSUS actually optimizes to only send the bits you need rather than sending the entire one gigabyte package. Plan this out, test it, and just stay up to date.